remember back in the day when pretty much every new Apple product was the best product that Apple could make at that time. Nowadays, that has changed a lot, to the point where Apple is holding off features until the following year just to sell more devices. A good example of this is the Apple Watch, which got an LTPO display with a Series 4, but only the Series 5 added the display controller for the always-on functionality, or how the Apple Watch Series 6 added an oxygen level meter, which could have easily been added to the Series 5 or even the Series 4. So imagine if Apple was back to that old mentality today, and they decided decided to make the perfect iPhone. And by perfect iPhone, I don't mean a super thin foldable iPhone that's at least 10 years away, no. I mean, if they could realistically use the best components available on the market right now, like some of the Android competition has been doing, what iPhone could they realistically come up with? Well, no need to imagine because this is what this video is all about, and we've even made our own concept to help you guys visualize it. So without any further ado, get our snacks ready, and here is the perfect iPhone if Apple actually made it today. So let's start off with the design. What improvements could Apple make in order to make their iPhones look better? And to be honest, there's not a lot of changes that Apple could do here as from the back, they do look apart and the frosted glass back is just brilliant and the metal frame is actually made out of stainless steel on the pro models of the iPhone, so it is also super durable. But there are still a few things that I would change. For example, I'm a big fan of the S21 Ultra's matte black coating um, and I would love to see Apple implement such a color as we haven't really had a matte black iPhone since the iPhone 7 from 2016. Not only that, but the frame on the iPhone 12 Pros is super glossy and fingerprinty. Apple could easily fix that by using brushed stainless steel, like they did with the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S, uh, so it still has the same durability as stainless steel, as you know it still is, but it heavily reduces the amount of fingerprints on it. And of course that, they could easily make that black too to match the matte black back. Okay, now I think we're in a pretty good place with the back and the frame, so now let's talk about the front. And I think that we all know what could easily be done here, and that is saying goodbye to the notch. We've had a notch on iPhones since the iPhone 10 from 2017, and literally the only reason why we still have it is because Apple really likes Face ID. And to be honest, I do too. I wouldn't want to see that being taken away, at least not entirely, so how would they remove the notch while keeping the same functionality. Well, they could theoretically include all the Face ID components, which have been rumored to be getting smaller and smaller, inside that top bezel. That's what we've done with our concept because we think it looks really good, but unfortunately, this isn't too realistic. Just because the bezel itself is already quite thin, and for Apple to include, even though the, these components are rumored to be smaller, all those components inside the bezel, it would likely have to be a tiny bit thicker than what it is now, which would be a downgrade. Now, another way would be for Apple to ditch Face ID and just have an under-the-display Figpin reader, like we've seen on plenty of Apple patents, and to include the front camera inside that top bezel. The camera itself will have to have a smaller aperture in order to fit, but I think that's a brand new sensor with better low-light performance and just better image processing in general could fix that. There is of course the option of using an in-display front-facing camera like on the new ZTE Axon 20, but unfortunately the quality coming out of that camera was, well, quite, uh, quite poor. So I think the best option right now for removing the notch is just getting rid of Face ID entirely, adding the under the display Touch ID, and then just making that front facing camera smaller so that it fits inside a top bezel while also improving the image processing. I think that would make this the best looking iPhone or arguably even the best looking phone of 2021. So what about the display? Well, this one's pretty easy. 120 Hertz ProMotion all the way, as the iPhone is the only flagship smartphone that still lacks any sort of high refresh rate. But okay, we all knew that, so what else? Apple could easily add always-on functionality, as we do have LTPO displays on smartphones today. In fact, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra from mid-2020 was the very first phone to include such a display. And always-on will make everyone's lives so much easier just by being able to see everything you care about on the screen all the time. We could also have a brighter display, like Samsung added to the S21 Ultra, that easily gets to a peak brightness of 1500 nits compared to 1200 nits peak brightness in HDR on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So, those small changes 
pretty much nail the display for me. Now, if you're an Apple user and you have an iPhone or an Apple Watch, a company that I would highly recommend is Bandwork, who is also our sponsor for this video. Bandwork is a premium German letter case and Apple Watch strap manufacturer, and what makes them stand out from the competition is that all of their designs are not just original, but they also feature genuine letter with some of the most beautiful and unique designs that I have ever seen. They occasionally have special edition designs where they make the Apple Watch straps from the interior letter of rare cars from the 20th century, which is really cool. And then they also have different designs in stock, such as the uh, Stockholm multicolor band, which has this really nice natural patina to it, and it also comes in multiple colors. They also have the Stockholm vintage Morkbrand band, which uses vegetable tanning in Germany. The uh, Zurich Cordovan black or midnight blue, which uses leather from the Horween tannery in Chicago. They come in multiple sizes and you can even customize the clasp so that it perfectly matches the finish of your Apple Watch. Check them out using the link below. And then we have the camera, where Apple claims that because of the 47% larger sensor on the iPhone 12 Pro Max compared to the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max actually captures 87% more light. But did you guys know that the Galaxy S20 FE, a $700 phone from last year, actually has a larger sensor than even the 12 Pro Max? Not only that, but we have smartphones such as the S21 Ultra, which have gigantic sensors when compared to anything else on the market right now, which give us a genuine bokeh, which you can't really get uh, without a physically larger sensor, unless you fake it in software, but it's it's not the same thing. Now, based on the reports from Ross Young, uh, we know that Apple will be using an even bigger sensor for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, with larger 1.9 micron pixels compared to 1.8 that the S20 is using right now, so that's already something that we are getting, which is pretty awesome. Now, we've also seen reports that we will be getting autofocus on the ultra-wide angle module to give the iPhone some sort of macro mode like we already have on the S21 Ultra. I think that's great, but what would be even better would be for Apple to add a periscope zoom module inside the iPhone, because that would give us crazy numbers like 10x optical zoom like the Huawei P40 Pro Plus has or the S21 Ultra. We haven't seen any reports of us getting this anytime soon, maybe just in 2022, maybe, but I think that this is something that Apple could add even today um, as, well, we already have this technology, first of all, and then second, this would make the camera overall as a package on the iPhone so, so much better. But there are a few more things which Apple could also easily add, things such as a 4K time-lapse or an improved slow motion mode with more than 240 frames per second, maybe 720 and 960 or something like that, that would make the iPhone's camera, again, as a package, even better. But other than that, I think the cameras are in a pretty good place. Like, I'm not a fan of high megapixel counts on smartphone cameras, as you do need a lot of light for those to look good, and uh, you can do pixel binning for photos, but for video, well, those cameras are pretty bad in low light. But still, I guess that having the option is still better than not having it, so what I would really like to see here is Apple to add a high resolution module aside from the main camera module. So in that case, we would have the main 12 megapixel module, let's say a 64 megapixel high resolution module, uh, then the ultra wide, of course, and then the Periscope 10X zoom module. That would be the perfect camera arrangement in a phone. Now, when it comes to the performance, Apple is pretty much in the top place right now, at least when it comes to the CPU and the GPU performance. But something that the perfect iPhone would improve on is RAM. The iPhone 12 Pros now have 6GB of RAM, and while some of you might think that this is plenty for iOS, as it's very well optimized in general, I can assure you, it's not. Like, this is my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2, which is my main Android phone, and I use this alongside the iPhone, and one of the things that impresses me the most about this phone is the fact that I can literally go back a few days into my app history, and most of the apps will still be loaded in the background, whereas my iPhone closes up apps after a few hours of use, or in some cases, even just a few minutes, when it comes to YouTube. Especially. And this is thanks to the insane 12 gigabytes of RAM that the Galaxy Z Fold 2 has. And the good news is that Apple wouldn't even need to add 12 gigabytes to their iPhone to achieve this. Instead, they could easily get away with 8 gigabytes and, in theory, achieve very similar results. Now, let's talk about the special features that this iPhone should have. The first one is pretty obvious USB Type C. The perfect iPhone needs USB Type C. Now, Apple is rumored to be removing the charging port entirely. But I, for one, 
do not agree with this. I believe that for Apple to be able to do that, wireless charging needs to be faster than any wire charging that we have now. And at the moment, MagSafe is twice as slow as Lightning. And this is why I believe that Apple should add USB Type-C, as it will keep the same charging speed that we have now and give us the ability to use any charger that we want with it, including the MacBook and the iPad charger. On top of this, Apple could easily improve the speed of wire charging as well from 20 watts, which is what we have now, to at least 30 or even 50 watts, which is what most of the Chinese competition already has. Then we also have reverse wireless charging, which is a feature that, come on, it needs to be added in the perfect iPhone. This is something that we've had on Android phones for years now, and something that, even though it was rumored to be included in the iPhone 11, it never was. Or maybe it was. We've seen a few reports that um, there was actually a hidden reverse wireless charging feature on the iPhone 11, but you know that never got approved or enabled. But now we also have FCC filings that show that the iPhone 12 does actually have reverse wireless charging, but it's also disabled. Now, some reports are saying that this is because Apple will be launching some new AirPods with MagSafe and that when those launch, this feature will be activated, so fingers crossed for that. But my point here is that I find it pretty ridiculous that I can charge my AirPods Pro from the back of my Samsung phone, but not from the back of my iPhone. Just how I find it super ridiculous that my MacBook and my iPad charger can both charge a Samsung phone, but not an Apple phone. Yeah, just, just sort it out, Apple, please. It's, it's just ridiculous at this point. Then the perfect iPhone should also have a bigger battery. So the Galaxy S21 Ultra, for example, has a 5,000 mAh battery. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, which uh, was Apple's longest lasting iPhone, had 3,969. But then the iPhone 12 Pro Max actually dropped that to 3,687. And while the 11 Pro Max managed to last me longer than any of my previous phones, the 12 Pro Max was actually overall a downgrade battery life wise. Like imagine if Apple had a 5,000 million power battery in an iPhone with the efficiency of their own processor as well as iOS itself, we could literally be getting a two day battery life out of it considering that's the 11 Pro Max, uh, in my case at least, lasted me for a day and a half. So I'm pretty sure that an iPhone 13 Pro Max with a 5,000 million power battery, I could easily get two days out of that. And finally, let's talk about the price. How much should the perfect iPhone cost? Well as little as possible, of course, but realistically, if Apple priced this at around $900, which they could, um, they would be killing the market. But wait, Daniel, that's impossible. Like the iPhone 12 Pro Max costs $1,100 and comes with way less features. And that is correct. But then take a look at this. This is the Xiaomi Mi 11. It's a phone that comes with a 3200 by 1440 20x9, 120 hertz panel, 1500 nits of brightness, so this is literally the same panel, I believe, as on the S21 Ultra, uh, a 180 megapixel camera, which is the same one as on the S20 Ultra, as well as a 4600 million power battery, 55 watt fast charging, 50 watt wireless charging, and 10 watt reverse wireless charging. All this for 749 euros, or about $907 converted. So Apple could easily match or even exceed these specs for the same price if they really wanted to. But let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? What would make the perfect iPhone in your eyes? But yeah, if you have enjoyed our video and our concept, definitely subscribe and also give this video a like to uh, let us know. You can also follow us at Zen of Concepts. Those we have an Instagram account and a Twitter account where we actually post some behind the scenes concepts. And uh, yeah, if you just wanna see concepts, then definitely follow those accounts. But this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, this has been Zen of Tech. I'll see you guys in the next one. Zen of Tech, signing out. Cheers.